Are you desperate to try to learn the piano, but for whatever reason, getting a teacher at the moment just isn't an option? Well, this video is just for you, and it will show you how to get started in the most productive way. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first trip here, then please do consider subscribing. Simply hit the little button in the right hand corner of your screen now, and it's all done for you. Before we go any further, let me just say that if you do have the option to get a teacher, then it's highly recommended, as you'll see yourself making far more progress more reliably and more quickly than if you do when you're teaching yourself. But I fully understand that there are many times in life when this is just not an option, and somebody just saying, oh, get a teacher, get a teacher, frankly, is unhelpful. Perhaps this latest coronavirus thing is one of those occasions when we have to think of different ways of doing things. Despite all of the videos you'll see on YouTube with the hacks of how to go from beginner to pro in no time at all, I'm afraid that teaching yourself piano is an awful lot of hard work, but also it's a great deal of fun. So if you're ready to start on this, let's get straight into it. The first thing you need, of course, and it's a bit obvious, but it's a piano of some description. Uh, clearly, anything is better than nothing, but really your minimum would be 88 fully weighted keys. You can get smaller semi-weighted keyboards, and yes, you'll be able to learn some things. You'll be able to learn simple music. You'll be able to work out where some notes are on the piano. But to be honest with you, you'll grow out of them very quickly. And it'd be a little bit like trying to learn to drive using a go-kart. Great fun to, to hurtle around for a little while, but we'll never ever equip you to drive a car. The second thing you need is a method book. Now, if you're an absolute beginner, you'll find some good ones such as Alfred's All-in-One or Faber Piano Adventures that will give you what you need to get started. If you're returning to piano after a break and you want to try teaching yourself, then what about something such as Melanie Spanswick's Play It Again Piano Course? This has got three books that start right off from the most basic stuff if you really do want to have a full refresher course. I can't stress enough how important I think getting a good method book is. Strangely, I don't think the choice of method book is all that important in reality. However, what is important is that you have something that takes you along step by step, introduces or reintroduces you to concepts and to piano type vocabulary so that you can make small steps progressively rather than jumping around trying to learn different things that you don't really understand quite at the moment. Of course, most method books are written on the assumption that you'll actually have a teacher as well. And so they only provide half of the answer to somebody keen to teach themselves piano. Next, choose yourself a good online resource to supplement whatever method you're following. Clearly, sometimes seeing something demonstrated on the piano is much easier to follow than trying to work it out from words and pictures. Now, the issue here really is that you can watch hours and hours of random YouTube videos, and to my mind, this is more likely to confuse you than anything else. Therefore, initially, stick to one good source that you trust. For example, I'd recommend Penis Magazine's channel on YouTube. Here, if you're a beginner, you'll find a whole playlist dedicated to beginners with lessons starting from one and going upwards. If you're returning to piano, so you're already far from being a beginner, you'll find intermediate and advanced level lessons covering a whole variety of topics. Because of course, as you move through whatever method book you are moving through, you'll start to learn new things, and it's useful to be able to have another resource to study them from. Now then that we have a method book identified, 
we've got our piano and we've got a video source on YouTube. What comes next? Generally speaking, most people will have a piano lesson maybe every week, every two weeks, and this could be anything from 30 minutes to an hour. During this lesson, your teacher will say your homework for next week, and they'll look at whatever it is that you've been learning, so you'll play for them, and they'll give you advice and tips on the things you may be doing wrong or the things that you can improve. Luckily then, in terms of the teacher's guidance from week to week, we can largely rely on our method book. Whatever we have in there is the things that we will start to learn and the things on which we will concentrate during the week. However, the real problem that we now have is that we've got nobody to watch us and to give us advice. In this kind of situation, it could stop you from learning altogether. So therefore, what you need to do is to learn how to watch yourself, how to critique yourself, and how to make sure you're following the advice from either the books or the videos that you've been watching. So effectively, you give yourself a piano lesson. So to do this, of course, perhaps the first thing you need to do is actually work out what the content of that lesson is going to be. You need to decide up front what it is you're going to play for yourself during the lesson and you'll have to decide how are you going to work out whether the result is good or bad. Luckily, with the advent of smartphones these days, it becomes relatively simple to film ourselves. So in actual fact, what we do is we play for the camera, we demonstrate what we've learned to the camera, and then afterwards we'll sit down and we'll go through it piece by piece, checking everything that we think we should have done during the lesson. So in a way, think about your phone as being your teacher sitting there watching you like a hawk with everything that you do. So then let's have a little think about what a piano lesson might look like when you're teaching yourself. Now, whether you're an absolute beginner or whether you're returning after a break, perhaps one of the first things you're going to need to do is look at how you sit at the piano. Now, pretty much every method book will start off with some verbiage and some pictures of what's the best way to sit at the piano. So then, in your first self-taught lesson, you're actually going to need to check whether you've managed to implement the advice properly. One way that you could do this would be to take a screenshot out of the video of yourself sitting there and then compare that side by side to either a screenshot from, say, a Pianist magazine video or from your method book and just compare the two. What's the angle of your forearm like? Is your wrist too high or too low? Why are your shoulders? Are they too high, too low? Is your back straight? Are you slouching? All of these things you can check and validate for yourself. And of course, if you find something wrong, you can then go about correcting it and then refilm yourself. Of course, this is something a teacher can do for you in seconds. And doing it for yourself takes a good bit while longer to do. But it can be done, can't it? You can still sit there and if you study carefully, you can work out whether or not you appear to be sitting correctly at the piano. And then you can apply this same thing for any other type of things such as hand positions. Are your fingers curved? Are they too straight? Is your wrist too high? Is your wrist too low? Are you aligned to the keys? Is your hand twisted? All of these things you can check for yourself by watching extremely carefully and of course by going back to the book to check what it says you should do or back to the video that you watch to check that you're doing what that video described and showed. And now then for the really hard part. So being able to analyse a screenshot of the position of your hand or your position on the piano bench against another picture provided in a book is relatively simple to do and most of us will manage to do that quite easily. It's more complicated to work out whether or not the sound that we're producing when we play is actually what it should be. Let's use the super simple example of a five finger exercise. 
Of course, as beginners, these are something that we're taught right from the beginning, just really to get our hands used to moving at the piano in the most simple of ways. So you might, of course, then just need to play up and down like this. The trick then is that you need to listen back to what you've done and work out, does it sound even? Is it rhythmically even? Are the notes of an equal volume or is it bumpy? Now you might well say, but how will I know? And of course, this is where you need to start doing research of your own. If you're following a beginner method book, of course, then the things that you learn will be quite simple to start with and the descriptions of how it should sound will be quite detailed. So you should be able to work through this quite easily. If you're playing more advanced music, the chances are you'll be able to get plenty of recordings of that music to listen to, so you can compare what you're playing to recorded versions. This is why supplementing the book that you have with a good video source works wonders, because you're able to always cross-reference what you're doing with good demonstrations from elsewhere. Remember, you don't need to be a master pianist to teach yourself. You just need to have learned enough so that you're able to try to implement what you've learned and then listen back and watch back to what you've done to see if it matches what you expected. In extreme cases, what you might even be able to do, and I've done this myself on occasion, is to use software such as Symphony Pro, where you effectively just copy the music from your book into the software, press a button, and the software plays it back to you. That then gives you a good view of whether or not at least you've got the rhythm correct. I warned you this wasn't going to be easy. You've got to first work out what something should be like, then you've got to try and implement that yourself, and afterwards you watch back the results very, very carefully to see if it matches your expectations. Of course, as well as the things that we should be doing, let's have a little thought about the things perhaps we shouldn't do. Now you might think that my first point is a bit odd given that I've said that YouTube videos are a great source. However, I would avoid watching hours and hours of random YouTube videos. Especially if you're a beginner because you don't know what you don't know and therefore you'll soon get confused and you can't work out whether the advice given is relevant for what you're trying to do. For example, the general way that you should play is with your fingers curved. Everybody will advise you that, but it's not the only way. There are times when playing with flatter fingers is better. However, as a beginner, you're not easily going to be able to work this out for yourself. So therefore, stick to the progressive way that your method book teaches you. Learn only those things. Watch videos on only those topics, initially at least, until you get much more used to the vocabulary of playing piano. The second thing that I'd advise is avoid posting random questions to piano forums and piano groups such as, oh, I'm a complete beginner, please can you help me? More often than not, the response you'll get will be, well, get a teacher, which is not what you're looking for, is it? These groups are absolutely invaluable. I'm a member of many and I follow them and I post questions myself. But to get the best benefit, make sure you've got a focused question that will give you a good detailed answer. And then you'll get tremendous value from these groups. Thirdly, I definitely recommend don't start off with a piece of music you've just always dreamed of playing. We're all tempted to do it. I'm tempted myself to this day to tackle things that are far, far, far too difficult. You know, I've often seen people will post a question in a piano group asking, what, what does this symbol mean? And they'll take it from the fantasy impromptu. And you, always, you know automatically that if they're asking the question, then actually they're not ready for this piece, not by a long chalk. So initially at least, stick with the pieces that are recommended, work through them, and get to understand the difficulties there, to master those difficulties, and move forward slowly. 
and later on you'll be able to tackle the more difficult pieces but initially stick with the method if you carefully implement the advice in this video then you should find that this is enough to get you started as a self-learner initially when the coronavirus or whatever other thing it is that's preventing you from having a teacher goes away then you can consider getting a teacher at that point at least you'll have been able to make some progress in the meantime without hopefully getting yourself into bad habits that are then very difficult to correct later on of course you might simply choose to continue teaching yourself and why not you know one of the world's greatest pianists a russian guy called richter was effectively self-taught right into his 20s in fact such was he self-taught that when he was admitted to the Moscow Conservatory, they had to give him a special pass to get in because he didn't actually meet the technical requirements that were required for entry to the conservatory. Yet anybody listening to him play could clearly tell that he was an absolute master musician. Of course, not all of us are able to intuitively work all of these things out for ourselves and having some outside help is very useful. And if that outside help comes from watching ourselves back when we've played something, then why not? If you're not already, then please do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Don't forget to hit that little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you soon.